Okay, let's talk about the setup screen. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do in here, as you can see. And you can navigate through these by moving up and down with this uh, right-hand button. And you can press it in and select one when it's highlighted in red. So if I were to select Open from Memory, which is one of the first things you're probably going to want to do, I'm going to select Studio. That's going to be my first thing. It's the first thing I did, and I did this for a long time. I didn't set up groups or memorize anything. I just had three lights. I just push a button, uh, open it from lights. So if I have my lights on, I have the receivers on, and on the case of the ones like on the Alien B, where you have the remote uh, separate units with a cable, like the CSRB Plus, or the CSR, uh, CSR um, Plus, you have to, uh, I like to go over and push the power button on it, the, the you know fire button, basically basically to test it and it wakes it up if it's been asleep. Obviously you have to have batteries, anything that needs batteries, so everything's awake. And I can come in here and I can select a Studio here and I can press uh, in on this right hand uh, button and it will go ahead and open from Studio and you have to wait. This uh, open from Studio will change and you'll just see it saying and finally say finished opening and you're ready to go and you can go back here to menu and navigate back to your flash screen and you're ready now to start moving the powers up and down and working in that screen area, which we're going to actually do some of that and get the studio uh, running so you can actually see some of that happening. And we can maybe jump back and forth between some of these screens. You can see what's happening while we're doing it in the studio. So uh, I can navigate here on the lower left to the different places. Um, Internally, there's two memories, and then there's open from studio, which is whatever's live right now. Uh, there's two internal memories, and if you just have a few lights, that might be all you need. But because it comes with a micro SD card, and there's also a newer version, I think up to 32 gig cards, it's only a 2 gig card in, in here when you get them. Um, that allows you 50 more memories in there, and you can. The best way to get there is go to the right here on this uh, studio. If you go left and go to internal one two, the next thing you're gonna go to is in, is uh, that remote uh, card number 50. So if you have someone number one, you be faster to go to the right there, and uh, you can open anything. Whatever you've got selected here, internal one two or any of those 50 channels. If you press the button in here and it's saying open from, say internal one. There you go. It's gonna. Uh, that's where I may have something memorized. So I'm gonna have that open uh, up, whatever I've selected, and you'll see it come live here if everything's functioning properly, and you'll start seeing the relative powers and where things were at the last indication. Uh, the next thing here is that here's memory one. I forgot I took a screenshot of this. Uh, uh, memory one open from there, and here is a group one. You can actually uh, take a look and open groups. And here's the flash meter setup. So that was like the next thing down on the screen. If we go down you know, back here, if we hit the uh, the back menu button here, it will take us back to the setup screen. Remember, that's this one. And we can uh, press function up or down, and we can move to groups. We can move over to here. Like I have groups here, and I can open groups. So I can go to flash meter. So let's get back down to the flash meter here. And here on the left side and the bottom is where you change this ISO. Um, whatever you have on your camera, if you're shooting at 100 or 200 or whatever it is, you want to put this in here to uh, make sure that your meter is reading accurately for your settings in your camera. The uh, sync speed, you can put that in here. Uh, it jumps, jumps in full stop increments, so 125, 250. If you're in between, like I shoot at 160 and not 200th on my Canon, I... I can't get exactly, so I have to make a slight adjustment that this is metering, probably uh, showing it a little bright in, the, in a sense if I if it's metering for this and everything seems okay. It's probably too bright uh, or I may get too dark. Uh, sitting here speaking while I'm recording this, I might have that backwards, but either way, I'm going to see it if it's a big change there. So um, uh, the calibration here, you can calibrate this too, and there's instructions in to follow. So if you have a Sekonic or other kind of light meter, and those are very accurate, you could then calibrate this to be similar to that. So it may have a plus or minus a little bit you've got to do, and that's what this little uh, plus or minus will show up here, that you've calibrated it maybe minus one or plus plus two or something, so it matches closer to your Sekonic when it meters, so you can trust this to be giving you a similar thing if you just grab this real quick, take a meter reading. Um, so it's a great little thing, the little meter dome is on the other side from the text here, and that's what's got to be facing the lights when you do your metering, we will talk more about that. Uh, the next area here is like 
light unit settings. Now, you can do this by individual lights, and you can adjust that here, or by group. I'm, in this case, I've got it set on group, and I wanted to tell all the lights in the group to have the same settings. I wanted the model mode to be in track. I wanted the power on on that. I wanted the recycle indicator to be both. Uh, it's kind of a pulse of the uh, modeling lights as well as a beep. Slave cell is off because I don't want anything reacting to any other flashes. Uh, maybe even turning on the lights in the room sometimes can pop those off, and I've had that happen uh, there. And one part, I had a person in the studio with the group I was teaching, and they one person had a pop-up flash and he had the wireless transmitter on and when he fired we got a double pop because we got the uh, wire wireless going and the slave hitting and boom boom <laughs> so we're like where did that come from so uh, i make sure this is off unless i need it I'm, there's, and there's times to need a slave cell so don't get me wrong i i use it uh, numerous times for a number of things and uh, that'll be some specialty things. Uh, color mode, constant color, that ensures that you're always getting the same light color output no matter what your power setting. If you need faster light for freezing motion, you might move to action mode, and then you're doing liquids or powders or a person in motion, uh, it might be more uh, uh, better for you, much better for you to have action modes. You can get a higher light speed, get that T1 light speed at a something that can freeze your motion. Uh, in these lights, lowering the power down more and more speeds up that, um, you know, on the Einstein's speeds up the light. Uh, less and less power, whereas on the um, Alien Bs, the more you crank it up, there are different technologies, I believe that's the, we'd call it analog, these are digital, the Einsteins, you're going to get uh, the light speed faster, the more you bump them up, so you've got different things going on there. If you have, I don't use, if I'm needing to, to freeze motion, I don't use the Alien Bs with my Einsteins, I want to control the Einsteins, I'm going to put them in action mode, I'm going to get the speeds I want. Your speed's going to be the lowest light, you know, the slowest light in the group. So if you have three lights and, and two of them are at 8,000 of a second, one's at 6,700, that's going to be your speed because there's still going to be some light in the room that the camera might see. So you're going to have to check all that. So you can move your parameters up and down here and uh, and settings and, and uh, press. Uh, and once you, once you leave it here, you can navigate back out of here to that main screen on the right. And you can select what you're setting. You just can go to one light and make adjustments to one light and versus the entire group here. So this is, if you have any things aren't behaving the way you want, come here to the uh, unit settings and, and check them on individual lights. And or even the group and make sure they're where you want uh, uh, for that your particular setup and what you're doing. Um, over here, when we go to the uh, naming of lights, I can get to that screen and I can go through here and pressing my selecting name, which is the joystick on the right up or down, moves me through these and I can uh, select a light. So I f if I select number one, I might call it main light. Light number two, I might say fill light. Uh, light number three might be hair light or, or something like that. So hair C back. Uh, these are all shorthands here. Um, skim lights, main A, main C, fill out left, fill right. Um, you know, they, it's all going to be uh, what you want to uh, select and name your lights so it makes sense to you. I actually have tape on my lights in the studio with a number on so I know what light is one, two, and three visually uh, when I'm taken out of a bag so I can always put the same lights in the same positions so when I open from a group they're always in the same place. So uh, let's go down to the next screen in here. Uh, this is uh, part of the naming uh, process here. I was selecting uh, the lights here actually and defining a light. Let's go back up here to this first screen. We have names and we have light specs here and light settings. Now light specs is what I'm at down here and I want to get back to that. And my alien bees weren't showing up in here. I wasn't unable to control the power. I wasn't getting the blue candle. And um, it, because the cyber commander didn't know what kind of light it was until I went in here to this setup area and I chose that light number three. And I went up and navigated with the select to alien bees and I, then it gave me the next screen is going to give me a wattage output, whether it's a 400 or an 800 or whatever. And I was able to select it. And once I did that and then open the lights, ta-da, I suddenly was seeing my alien B in the mix with, and I could control the power. So uh, I'm going to define all my lights in here, except you don't have to do that for 
Einstein's. Einstein's are recognized by the cyber commander. It already knows what it is. Doesn't You don't need to tell it. But in here, if you're using a white lightning or a Zeus or alien bees or other, uh, or you just want to say none, you can do that. Uh, obviously, if it's other uh, lights and things, you're not going to be able to control the power. You're just going to have it in the mix and it will fire if it has the right receiver on it. So you can pop it uh, that way and use other lights in the mix, but you won't be able to control them from the top of your camera here. Uh, this screen, by the way, it just shows you your frequency where you're at right now. I'm using frequency one. I can change that here and then go on my lights and make sure this all matches up. So I'm, if I'm having problems on a certain frequency, conflicting with maybe someone else who's working nearby, uh, let's say if you're you know, working in a situation where there's other photographers, then you might want to change your frequency on your lights and things if you're all trying to use similar frequencies and you're having trouble communicating or crossing up. So you come in here to the frequency part of the setup menu, and you can change that here, but make sure you match up your lights to that. And save all the memory. Yay! Once you've gone and set up some things, you can go in here and save a lighting setup that you've got out there active right now <clears throat> to a particular memory. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me clear my throat here. And uh, you can choose internal one, two, or one of those 50 out on the SD card. And then you can come back here and reopen those same lights with the same settings so everything's back where it was when you were uh, the last time you were in here. So let's go back up to that first screen. Again, you navigate through this right-hand side functions, move up and down, press in to select it whenever the red indicator is on what you want. Advanced configuration, uh, don't go there. If you have questions about that, you're going to give a call to policy buff for anything there. If you're having any problems with anything, don't go doing anything. Check with them. They're very friendly. I've called in before to, to have a chat about some of this that I was not clear on or things weren't working. I just had a little aha moment So, uh, with their guidance. So uh, get help on that. And, and if something says don't do it, then don't do it without getting help. Um, something like... Uh, uh, a firmware update and things is pretty straightforward, but don't overwrite a firmware update uh, with a, the same firmware update. You only want to do it once with a certain level uh, from one level to the next. So again, navigate us, press in. You've got save as, open memory. You've got groups you can set up, add and remove lights, uh, flash meter set up, light settings for groups or individual, naming your lights so you know which one is what on the flash screen you'll be in the modeling screen, you'll be able to tell which light you're actively working with uh, versus just light one, two, or three. It can tell you uh, something like uh, skim light. Bang, you know that's your skim light. The light specs uh, in there, the frequency you're currently on, and uh, advanced configuration, then you can go back around again. Again, to get out of here, just press the menu button to the left or right, and you can navigate away from here back to your modeling or your flash screen. So hopefully that's been helpful, and if I think of anything else as we go along with any of the uh, other parts of the training that might be relevant, I can come back in here and we can talk about specific areas here.